Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. Today you join me for the second round of the FIA Nations Cup Exhibition Series. Uh, this is the second round and we are at a track and car combination that I don't think anyone really enjoys. Well, certainly from my point of view and from the people I've spoken to, uh, it's not a great combination, it really isn't this. So for round two, uh, around the Kyoto Park, I believe, is one of the many layouts that they've got for this circuit and we are in the Mazda Touring car. Uh, it's just 200 brake horsepower on this thing, it doesn't weigh hardly anything so it should be you know, a good combination of handling, right amount of power as well and it should just really grip. But the problem is, is that Gran Turismo has put the Mantri tyres to be the comfort soft tyres. Uh, not comfort, sorry, the sports soft tyres. So they're not racing tyres, they're sports tyres instead and you just don't seem to have that grip that grip you would normally get if you have those racing tyres. Now I know uh, they are a soft version of sports tyres but still they're not really going to match up with the racing hard tyres so certain corners just coming out of here as well they can be a little bit tricky if you want to put your foot down even in this car uh, with such a you know low weight and low power it still can be a little bit tricky uh, coming out those uh, acceleration you know tight accelerating corners can be a little bit tricky so not fantastic but we're halfway through uh, this lap now and it's not going too bad. As you can see, we're currently sat in fourth place. We're not too far off first. Our first lap was a 151.9, but if we want pole, by the looks, we're gonna to have to improve by four attempts, which is quite a bit. And you can see my middle sector was not particularly great, but we do manage to get behind this guy in front of us, uh, the person sitting in P14. So that means we are gonna get some slipstream coming all the way up the hill, which will provide us with some real speed uh, for the downhill section as well, which by the way, is absolutely awesome. It's such an awesome downhill section. This is so cool. Uh, going left, right, and then left again. Uh, but you're really on the limit. You really are. Like going across there, that for me, that's cutting the corner. Um, but for some reason, uh, the corner cutter penalties on this track are very, very bizarre. They're not quite what I expect them to be. So we managed to take the nick there, gain some time. Again, really, really close to this guy here. Uh, he's given us a slipstream all the way uh, to the finish line. But is it going to be enough to take that pole position? No, it's not, but it's damn well close. Look how close that is. So less than a tenth there, separating first, second, and third. Absolutely unbelievable. But as we fast forward, uh, someone else manages to cross the line there uh, and just pips us to the post, gets P2 by one thousandth of a second. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Talk about luck, eh? But fair play to that guy. Great qualifying that. But we set ourselves getting ready for the race now. For this race, um, there's nothing you need to worry about in terms of tyres um, and in terms of fuel. You can pit halfway through this race if you want to, but I'm, I'm led to believe that it's best to just do the nose stop. But brake bias set to free on the rear, put traction control, traction control setting to one, kind of speak, wait for the lights to go out, and as they go out, we get an absolutely awesome start. My trick there was to just use the handbrake instead of the brake itself, and as soon as you let go of the handbrake, Honestly, so much better. But we managed to jump the guy in P2. We're going to chase down the guy in P1 now. He slightly outbreaks himself, so I'm going to look for the switchback. Just about get it done. Now, we do we have the grip around the outside of the corner to get it done on the guy in P2. Yes, we do. And amazingly, we managed to jump up from P3 to P1 on the starting grid. Really, really happy with that start. You couldn't have done that any better, I don't believe. Thankfully, the guy in P2, uh, or P1 at the time, just outbreaks himself going to that first corner. And we managed to jump in and that puts us up into P1, but that's far from over. Uh, this, <laughs> with these cars, because they've got such low brake horsepower and such low traction coming out those corners, so easy to make a mistake. And yeah, the cars, <laughs> if you make a mistake, because they've got such, such low power, uh, it almost feels like you pay for it more than if you had a high power car, which just sounds ridiculous. But this corner here, by the way, it's just, honestly, I'm sure you guys found it as well. It's an absolutely horrible corner in these cars, because, because of the track limits, there's a way you have to take that corner to maximise it. If you just take it normally, you just lose so much time like I have to own to the, the Dutchman here. I was just so slow going through there, I just lost so much time. But I was just so scared of cutting the corner and getting a corner cutting penalty that I was just, <laughs> I just didn't have the guts uh, to just go for it. And it really, really does cost me in this race. But you're going you're gonna to find out as we uh, continue. But again, down this um, awesome... Uh, downhill section once more just trying to time my acceleration coming down the hill perfectly just to try to get the right launch I want the inside of this corner uh, for the home straight um, it goes a little bit wide here 
Now sticking to the inside is the fastest line, there's no doubt about that. But I just get the feeling that it's going to cost me dearly on my front left tyre. That is going to, if I keep taking that line and keep turning in at those kind of speeds, uh, my front left tyre is really, really going to pay for it by the, at the end of this race. But braking after the cones, as soon as like the blue kind of tarmac comes into play, oh, he goes horribly wide there, completely outbreaks himself, and we managed to get that P1 back again. But yeah, I think he tried to outbreak us on the inside corner. He just timed it wrongly, unfortunately, for him. Um, but we do manage to keep that pole position. And that, and this corner here as well, again, is absolutely awful. I'm sure you guys have, um, who any of you guys who've done this race this week, or today, I should say, it's just... The track limits just make a really, really awful kind of car and track combination. It does, just didn't feel right for me. I, just, I didn't enjoy myself in this race as much as I should do. Uh, but the racing was absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome in this race. But I didn't enjoy myself as much as I really wanted to because I was so scared of those track, those track limit penalties. And look at this. I just could not, could not get this section right. And I thought I did that well, but we start going up the hill we've gone from eight temps and by the end of going up this little hill section i've lost three and a half temps to the guy behind me and i don't know i was practicing i was trying to you know take the corner different ways you know go wide and inside inside and then out i just no matter what i did could not get that corner right and it really really cost me because if i could just get that corner right i'm sure i could run away with this race because the first two laps you know, it's just been me out in the front here, and I've not really managed to pull away at all when I should be, really. I just don't have the confidence, and I don't feel like I had the pace um, to pull away. And it was all due to that set of corners there, and I just couldn't nail it. And it was really was the story of my race here. Uh, and it, it, it will cost me if I don't manage to sort it out. But just touching the grass there ever so slightly, uh, losing a little bit of time, but nothing too dramatic. It's absolutely fine. But we're now three laps in, so... <laughs> This has been quite good. We set a purple time, but the Spaniard ends up going about half a second quicker. And we go through this section once more, and I absolutely make a howler. I mean, I'm all over the place. It's just so, so bad. And it, P2 catches right up with us. Uh, he manages to go around the outside, so the Italian gets us for P2 here. And it looks like we've got uh, someone from the Netherlands as well on the right-hand side. So we've gone from P1 leading this race, uh, dropping down to P3, which is just really frustrating. But... You know, it's deserved. I, I couldn't get that corner right, and if I'm going to fall down, it's my own mistakes. You know, I've, I've, I've practiced, practiced, I can't get it right. There's nothing more I can do, really. It is what it is. It's just a combination that just doesn't suit my racing style, I don't think. But never mind, we'll still crack on, we'll still try hard, and we just get a launch here, because uh, I think he got caught up by the Italian. I managed, managed to move to the right hand side, uh, get a really nice move done. Uh, it's caused him to go wide, and it looks like he potentially dropped down to P4. He has. We've actually now got the slipstream of the Italian in front of us. You can really out-rev these cars, by the way, guys. The Mazda Touring, uh, you can really out-rev it, which is um, good to see. So this Italian is doing his best uh, to try and get me off the slipstream, but I'm having none of it. I'm going to go for a big boy dive bomb here, just about get past him. I cut the grass just ever so slightly, but that was a great move. Great move down the inside. Managed to get it done, but... I compromised my exit and the Dutchman now has gone past me as well and he just pipped past me. I just don't have enough to keep it on the inside and try and fend him off. Uh, great move by the guy uh, now in P1. Uh, and yeah, that, <laughs> I was just so happy that I managed to get P1 but I just outbreak myself a little bit too much and unfortunately uh, this guy here um, you know, took the opportunity, took P1. Fair play to him but he's just gone wide there and it looks like I'm right on the back of him again. It's a really, really good racing in this, in this race so far. Uh, th these cars do promote really good racing, uh, which is great to see, but <laughs> I also feel like it's a combination of the penalty system as well, because everyone's so scared of making, you know, committing to a move or, you know, trying to defend it or something like that, uh, they just don't bother anymore, so <laughs> it, it does promote great racing in a way, it just means that when stuff does go slightly wrong, it goes very, very badly wrong, it's not just like, a, oh, here's a half second penalty for you, sir, it's Here's a two, three second penalty. Say goodbye to your SRD, R, mate. Get in the bin. It's just game over. So it does cause it does. Well, it certainly caused me to be more cautious throughout this whole race, and that's exactly uh, how I drove. But again, through this downhill section once more, I kind of just let go of the throttle in the middle of the corner, and then try and put my foot down. And that was naughty there. So I managed to stick to the right hand side, and it was a little bit naughty, I think, in my opinion, anyways, because I am kind of going like three, four wheels on the curb there. 
You'll have to let me know, guys, in the comments what you think of that, personally. But I'm thinking to myself that's a little bit cheeky. Um, such are the track limits for this race. Now, we're getting a little bump draft from the, um, from the Dutchman here. But you can see we're almost causing like a train. But unfortunately, this incident here, you can just see on the radar, the Italian just goes for a dive bomb. Uh, it doesn't work out. He pushes me and the Dutchman wide. I then get pushed wide again by the Spaniard. Uh, and in a matter of moments, we've gone from fighting for the lead uh, and it dropped us down to P4, which is just unfortunate, a little bit annoying. But these things happen, I guess. It, it is what it is. I'm not going to you know, lose my rag about it. But we're fighting with Spaniard all the way up the hill then. I'm getting the slipstream of the Dutchman, so I should have a car's length in front of him. But he just manages to keep his bumper there. And again, I'm just a little bit cautious because I don't want to knock him off. I just don't want to knock him off. So I've been really polite here, trying to give him as much room as I can. And yeah, I had to drop the position just to make sure I didn't take him out, really. And unfortunately, that drops me down to P5. But I do have the inside of this corner, but yet again, it is going to wear my tyres out quicker than everyone else's. And it is going to have a big effect later on in the race. But it's a little bit frustrating with the fact that the Italian, you know, kind of dive bombed. Didn't give those positions back, kind of just went for it anyways. He's now in P1 and cruising. Uh, and it's just like, well... Now I'm struggling, but we're going to look for a switch back here on the Spaniard if we can. There's two people here, so there's three of us here. Almost three wide going to this corner, but yet again, you can see I'm just going to let them go. I'm just, just ahead. I'm not going to get too involved in this. I'm just going to pick the opportunities. I'm going to pick my moments to go for a move, and this is where a move does come available. So you can see the Spaniard goes wide there. He's going to defend from the Spaniard on the left-hand side, leaves the door open for me. I go for a move on the inside, get the move done. Two positions in one corner. Lovely stuff. Absolutely awesome. I was punching the air about move. I absolutely loved that. He left the door open. I was polite. I went in there, <laughs> knocked on the door. He opened the door for me, and I went straight through. Have a bit of that, my son. And yeah, got back on the podium, which is exactly where we want to be. But of course, we do have our kryptonite, which is this corner here. And you're just going to see. I just touched the graph, grass <laughs> ever so slightly, and oh, I lost the rear end so so badly there. And unfortunately, as soon as we've got that P3 position. Half a lap later, not even that, uh, we managed to throw it away through. No fault but our own. It's just, yeah, once again, guys, just that corner, just that corner. It's an absolute killer. Anyways, we've still got a slipstream. We've still got an opportunity here. Uh, still right up the back of both these Spaniards here. Can we do anything, though? We don't want to go side by side here. Can we time our move yet again? Let go of the throttle. Looking to pick up at the perfect opportunity. We're just about to do it. Again, trying to get that launch. I don't know how that guy in P3, by the way, didn't get a penalty for that. He was well off. But I'm going to go for a move on the inside here. I've just got my car in there. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Was was that good? Was that a good move? Or was that did I force that, really? Was that a little bit naughty? Let me know in the comments, guys. Watch that back again. Let me know in the comments. Now, I'll go for a big move here. Just a normal, like, your normal breaking point. But the Spaniard, he absolutely crapped himself. And backs out of it, starts flashing his lights at me like I've done nothing wrong. And I'm like, mate, that's just a normal breaking point. I made the corner. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? I made the corner. It was where I was always going to break. But he absolutely crapped himself. And uh, yeah. Anyways, fast, fast forward on. And we're on lap seven now. Again, we're fighting with the Spaniard down this downhill section. And again, me just being so polite, I've backed off here. Because uh, I didn't want to... Oh, I wasn't brave enough. I wasn't brave enough through that downhill section. I was so scared of taking him out and then getting a penalty or something happening uh, and then just feeling guilty and unfortunately yeah I just let him pass but he makes a big mistake uh, on lap 8 going through this awful section once more and that means I can just get the slipstream as we go up the hill once more and I can claim that P3 position back yet again I mean some really really good racing uh, in this race I have to it has to be said it was a cracking race there's no doubt about that but once again a lap later surprise surprise who's side by side the Spaniard of course he is but once again I'm just going to pause it here because you can just see the angle of the cars you can see on the radar if I do not back out of this he's pushing me wide and it's game over and I didn't really back out enough and he still pushes me wide and it costs me dearly really dearly and it drops me down to P5 because the Frenchman here overtakes me and stupidly for some reason I get a half second penalty for ignoring track limits and unfortunately that was that guys I just couldn't pull it back could not pull it back it was it was one of those after that I dropped to P5 the tyres were gone I just uh, the race it was a good race but I should have managed it better I should have done other things better look back at this 
a 50-50 really. It was just one of those races where I enjoyed it, but at the same time I'm frustrated at the end of it. But uh, there you go, guys. Really hope you enjoyed that. Um, crack and race, I thought. 167 points. Not the best, but it will do. But uh, yes, if you did enjoy this, please like the video. Subscribe if you are new. And I will see you guys for the next one. Take care. Ta-da.